Jace, before I, uh, before I, uh, I knew you were going to go. <laughs> he may not owe me a whole drink, but that's certainly worth a half. <laughs> sad, sad, sad. First of all, thank you all for allowing me to come. It's been kind of an interesting day today. I've spent a lot of time um, this morning uh, with our um, Bright Futures program, which is a program that we have to give the youth of this city an opportunity for some paid internships working with the city or with other private interests that we can entice to do so. The good news is we had a packed house at UMKC. The bad news is we don't have nearly enough jobs to offer, just don't have enough. Now, those aren't the kids that everybody is moaning and groaning about on the plaza, although they were black, so, you know, they could have been, I guess. Um, but the ones that were there today are the ones that are trying to do something, trying to make something, and the sad thing for me is, is that we are not offering them as many opportunities as we could. So I tweeted out, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny how mine is always in my pocket, I don't know. Um, but I tweeted out asking people to uh, pass it on and retweet it so that maybe we can find some employers who might be able to offer a job or two. So if you have a mind to do so, please do that so that we can help find some kids some jobs because we all know that um, without learning the skills that you learn working, without having the opportunity to work with others and find out how to do that, uh, opportunities are limited and then we have problems on the other end. So whatever help you can give in that regard is great. I just want to say it's great to be with you. It's great to be, you, you guys are my peeps. Uh, is that still a word? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I was in Dallas uh, Wednesday, and I just want to let you know that it was the most, one of the more gratifying days that I have being in Dallas with people from all over the country talking about broadband and the most popular, most commonly used two words that I heard were Kansas City. You know, uh, people are looking at us. I, I'm happy that Jace actually had the coin. I'm assuming that it fell out of his pocket while he was riding his bike here. Is that right? Uh-huh. But Jace is a good man, and he got that coin because, in my opinion, he has done a marvelous job uh, doing something special for this city and opening things up. I have a great deal of respect for him. I have a great deal of respect for everybody in this room because one of the things that you bring to the table is diversity. I would, however, ask you, ask you, as we talked about yesterday at the middle of the map, and somebody said, what do we do about the inequity? Well, what you do about the inequity is you go out and find somebody equal and you bring them with you. You know, if you want to change that, then change it. You know, don't be asking me. I'm not, I'm just one guy in the city. But you guys, you're the ones who seem to operate so freely and above the issues that it plagued my generation. The issues of race, the issues of whether you're gay or straight, black or white, yellow, brown, what side of truce you live on. You guys seem to transcend that. So we're kind of counting on you to make that difference. So bring some people with you. We need more Latinos here. We need more black folks here. We need, I'm happy to see so many women, but in circles that I travel in, in business in this city, women are not very populating, okay? When I went to the Fed to, to uh, do an awards thing for the youth board of directors for the Fed, I asked them at the end, I was the third speaker, there were two speakers in front of me, the president of the Fed and the president of the chairman of the board, chairwoman of the board, and I asked the people who were there what was different, what was interesting about what they had seen so far in terms of speakers, and they didn't know. But the thing was, it was two powerful women at the same time doing the speaking. And that is somewhat rare. So please work more on diversity, continue to make it so, because in having diversity and in spreading diversity, we will make a much richer community. One of the things, thank you.
Um, I want to thank the five folks from my staff who are here participating. I will tell you this, um, and, I don't, and I don't say this enough to them, but I do say it periodically. I say it a lot to other people. Um, we have had a great two years. In 10 days, it'll be two years. It seems like about five, but it's actually only been two. And the staff that I have working with us, working as part of our team, is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I have a great deal of respect for them, but I also love them. They are smart. They drive the uh, issues. They are outside the box thinkers. Uh, the only thing that I wish they would do is I want to take them to Academy Lafayette uh, and have them meet the kids there because when I went to Academy Lafayette to read to the kids on the Turn the Page program, they, there were three little third graders who greeted me at the door with uh, Bonjour Monsieur Le Maire. And I'm trying to get the staff to do that, but they <laughs> seem to be somewhat resistant. I want to thank you for changing and helping to change the culture of Kansas City. It's a city I loved. I've lived in it all my life. I've loved it every day when I was in high school playing music as a hippie, uh, another anomaly, a black hippie playing Buffalo Springfield in the park on Sundays in the 60s. Power to the people. <laughs> black Panthers, yes. Um, they interviewed. They, uh, somebody from the star came up and interviewed me. What do you expect to be doing when you're 40? I said, well, you know, if I'm still able to feed myself and walk, because then 40 was like uh, the old people. I said, I'd love to be mayor of Kansas City. The reason I, I said that then, the reason I say that now is because there is no city that I'm aware of who has the potential that we do. This is an amazing city with amazing resources and remarkably talented people. And once we start to break out of the shell, which we are now doing, we will take a position in this country like we've never had before. That's due to you and people like you in this city. Every day we get a little stronger, we get a little smarter, we get a little bolder. Because of what you're doing and the, th and the ideas and the attitudes and the changes you bring, we've opened up our data. Code for America thought that we were really pretty cool. I see Pam back there. Is Joe here, Pam? He's at the, it, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, good. <laughs> it, you know, ever since he announced that uh, he wasn't gonna run again, his attitude has changed. He's kind of getting kind of loosey, you know, starting to wear shirts that don't button down all the time. I, it's, he's going wild, folks, he's going wild. Um, but because of you, we came up with things like the challenge cabinet. You know, that's a pretty neat deal. Uh, just a, a bunch of really smart people trying to figure out how we solve problems, how we interact, what do we do to make things better. And, and 30 people out of the 160 that applied, absolutely amazing. I assure you that would not have happened four years ago. And because of you, Kansas City is a much much better place. It's a place that I hope you love as much as I do. I hope you are willing to work as hard to, in, to make not just better but best as much as I do. I hope you're willing to do those things that will get us beyond some of our slower uh, thought processes to, to bring rail to as many parts of the city, to be as sustainable as possible, to work on our housing, to do something that improves our educational resources, not just for the kids that have money, not just for the kids that live in one part of town, but every kid in this city deserves to be educated at the highest level so that they can do what you're doing, so that they have the chances to be the type of person that you are and that you want your children to be. Every single child in this city should have that opportunity. I assure I assure you, I assure you, we could make this city double in size in 20 years if we did one simple thing. Put up a sign on every highway entering Kansas City that says, Kansas City, best public education in the country. We would have to turn people away. I don't want to take all your time. I know you have a schedule, and uh, part, of, part of my time was taken waiting for Jace to go find the coin, but that's okay, Jace. <laughs> no, I ain't going to let you live it down. I just want to tell you how, how appreciative I am for you to be here and how much I want you to stay here. 
and how much we need you to stay here and help change the culture of this city. But I also want to let you know that this culture is already changing and it's changing for the better. We've had a remarkable run, remarkable run. People around this country and the world know where Kansas City is all of a sudden. Even New Yorkers know where Kansas City is. And they're some of the most geographically ignorant people I've ever run across. <laughs> So stay here, be frosty, be cool, keep the tweets coming, keep, keep things working. And um, all I can tell you is, is that if you ever want to know where we stand in my office on doing the things that will make this the best place in the entire country for startups, for entrepreneurs, for people who think, for people who want to be inventive, for people who want to be on the cutting edge, then call because anybody who picks up the phone will be able to tell you it's right here in this office and we're all about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mayor James.